Now let's talk about how we can consume data from Kinesis Data Streams. And we'll talk first about the classic consumers. So the first one is the Kinesis SDK. So the same way we could use the CLI or some programming language to push data to Kinesis Data Streams, we can use the SDK or the CLI to read data from Kinesis Data Streams. We can also use the Kinesis client library, and I hinted at it in the previous lecture. It's named KCL. So we produce with the KPL and read with the KCL. There's also the Kinesis connector library, which could be abbreviated to KCL, but actually isn't. So it's a bit different from consumer uh, client library. And then we have third party libraries, such as Apache Spark, Log4j, Flume, Kafka Connect, all these things. But the exam expects you to know that Apache Spark is able to read from Kinesis data streams as a consumer. We can also use Kinesis data firehose and also AWS Lambda if we need to. There's this mechanism of consumption called Kinesis Consumer Enhanced Fanout, and I will discuss it in the next lecture. So for now, let's just consider how a classic consumer would work on Kinesis. So first, the SDK, get records. So this is classic Kinesis, and that means that the records are going to be pulled or pulled by the consumer from a shard. And each shard will get a maximum of two megabyte total of aggregate throughput. So each shard, remember, one megabyte of producer, two megabytes of consumer. So here's the example. Our producer is producing to our Kinesis data stream and it's formed maybe of, let's say three shards. And so if we have three shards, then we have six megabytes of aggregate throughputs for downstream. But each shard itself will get two megabytes for its own. So now we have a consumer application and it wants to read from, for example, shard number one. What it will do is that it will do a get records API call and the shard will return some data. And if the consumer wants more data, it needs to do another get records API call. So that's why it's called a polling mechanism. So get records, every time you run it, it will return up to 10 megabyte of data. And then because that 10 megabyte of data goes over the two megabyte per second total, you will need to wait five seconds until you do another get records or it will return a maximum of up to 1000 records. Okay. Now that means what is that? There's also another limit you need to know first is that there's a maximum of five get records API calls per shards per second. So that means that your consumer application, it cannot do just get records, get records like 20 times per second. It can do it only five times per second. That means that you will get 200 millisecond latency on your data. So remember that number because it's really important. But now what does that mean? If we look at these constraints and we start adding more consumers, well, if five consumers application consume from the same shard, they're different applications and they all need to read the same data, then each consumer basically can pull for once a second and can receive less than 400 kilobytes per second. So that means that the more consumers you have, the less throughput you will have per consumer. So if we had consumer B and consumer C, they will all share that limit of two megabyte per second per shard, and they will all share that limit of five get records API call per second. So it's really important to understand that, and we'll see how Kinesis Enhanced Fanout for consumers will solve that problem. The next thing we'll explore is to use the Kinesis Client Library or KCL to consume data. So it's a Java first library, but it also exists for other languages, such as Golang, Python, Ruby, Node.net. And it allows you to read records produced with the KPL. So remember how KPL does some aggregation, while the KCL does de-aggregation. So the idea is that with the KCL, you're able to share multiple shards with multiple consumers in one group. And there's a shard discovery mechanism. That means that your Kinesis data streams can be consumed by one application, but also a second one acting as a group together. And on top of it, there is a checkpointing feature. So that means that if one of these applications goes down and comes back up, it's able to remember exactly where it was consuming last in order to resume the progress. So how does the checkpointing works and all the shard discovery? Well, it basically uses an Amazon DynamoDB table to checkpoint the progress over time and synchronize to see who is going to read which shard, which makes it really helpful. So DynamoDB will be used for the, co the coordination and checkpointing, and it will have one row in the table for each shard to consume from. 
And so because we have DynamoDB in the equation now with this Kinesis client library, we need to consider how to provision throughputs for that DynamoDB table. So you need to make sure you provision enough write capacity units or read capacity units, WCU or RCU, or you need to use on demand for DynamoDB to just not use uh, any provisioning of capacity. Otherwise, if you don't do this well, well, DynamoDB may throttle and that throttling will in fact slow down KCL. So there is a very popular question at the exam saying, my KCL library is not reading fast enough, even though there is enough throughput in my Kinesis data stream, what's the problem? Well, the problem is that you probably have under provisioned your DynamoDB table and therefore it cannot checkpoint fast enough and therefore it cannot consume fast enough. So very important. Finally, there's a API of record processors to process the data, which make it really convenient to treat these messages one by one. So the Kinesis client library, what you need to remember is that it uses DynamoDB for checkpointing and though it has a limit on DynamoDB and it's used to de-aggregate record from the KPL. There's also the utterly confusing connector library also known KCL, but Kinesis Connector Library, and it's an older Java library from 2016, and it leverages the KCL library under the hood, and it's used to write data to Amazon S3 or DynamoDB, Redshift, or Elasticsearch. And the connector library must be running on an EC2 instance, for example, for it to happen. So it's an application whose sole purpose is to take data from Kinesis data streams and send it to all these destinations. Now, you may be like, oh, this is already something we can do with Kinesis Firehose, and that's true. We can already do this with Kinesis Firehose, and we'll see this. So for some of these targets, we can use Kinesis Firehose, for example, for S3 and Redshift. Uh, but for others, we can use AWS Lambda. So overall, I would say the Kinesis Connector Library can appear at the exam, but it's kind of deprecated and replaced by Kinesis Firehose and Lambda altogether. So let's talk about Lambda now. Lambda can read records from a Kinesis data stream, and the Lambda consumer also has a small library, which is really nice, used to de-aggregate record from the KPL. So you can produce with a KPL and read from a Lambda consumer using a small library. Now Lambda can be used to do lightweight ETL. So we can send data to Amazon S3, DynamoDB, Redshift, Elasticsearch, or really anywhere you want, as long as you can program it. And Lambda can also be used to read in real time from Kinesis data streams and to trigger notifications, or for example, send email in real time, or so whatever you may want. Finally, Frank will describe this at length, but there is a configurable batch size, and we'll see this in the Lambda section, but basically you can say how much data at a time Lambda should read from Kinesis, which helps you regulate throughputs. So overall, we've seen all the ways we can read uh, from Kinesis data streams. There are many different ones, but hope it places some context to which one is good for which use case, and I will see you in the next lecture.